Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, Joseph Varghese is training us on how to put structures in place that empower us to achieve our goals a little easier than might otherwise be the case. Joseph, I've got a couple of questions that will help us get to know you. Question number one is this. What's the greatest challenge that you have ever gone through and how did you navigate your way through it? Thank you, Roger. And first of all, I appreciate being here in front of this extraordinary audience. You and I have gotten to know each other the past couple of weeks. And uh, I especially love the part of the world you're in, in Vancouver. I've been there, I was there 11 years ago uh, in Glacier Valley camping with a, a community of people, a camp I went to at the time. Um, so I'm grateful to be here. The greatest challenge that I've gone through is the necessity of pivoting. And I've had upwards of about nine different career pivots in my life. And one of the first challenges happened when I was in college, getting into a car accident that had me reshift from my major as a chemical engineer into getting into technology. That was one of the first challenges that I had. And Within the following year, the next year in 1996, I found out that I had a heart condition and this had me, my mom had a heart transplant too at the same time as, a, as a, her doctor diagnosed her with the same condition. This is the challenge that I dealt with was recognizing that life is short and how important it is for us, each of us to really live our purpose each day. And it's a, master, it's a matter of focusing. So the challenge I went through was just making those pivots, those necessary pivots to get through that and to get to the next stage of life. Wonderful. And question number two is, how can people leverage, leverage accountability in order to progress towards their goals better, faster, cheaper, more efficiently, more effectively? How can they leverage accountability to do that? Great. Well, accountability is about getting in dialogue by getting a dialogue with people who are a step or two ahead of you. And in the process of that, in that, in that conversation where there's this new expectation that you're going to now rise up perhaps to the level that person is, something happens. So all accountability is, is a matter of keeping dialogue chains open with people in your life um, who, can, who, who are, are there to see you rise up. So it's continually putting yourself into conversations, perhaps even being part of this, the EBN, for example, engaging with other leaders, entrepreneurs, where you're adding value, where now you're expected to step up to as well also. And being able to do this in every area of your life, perhaps in areas that scare you too as well. I'll talk about too that in our talk this evening, but accountability is just simply that. It's about keeping the things you want in existence, particularly in dialogue, where people expect you now to be that person that you are. And we'll talk about that more in depth this evening as well. This, as well. I'm looking forward to it. Great. Uh, participants, if you have questions, would you please type them into the chat and I'll pose them to Joseph uh, in the course of his talk. Uh, my second comment is to let you know that, you'll, that you're going to be sent a link to the recording of uh, Joseph's training uh, it'll take me a few hours to get it to you, but you'll get it. Uh, but nevertheless, I still encourage you to take notes because the very act of taking notes uh, helps you with your absorption of this content uh, by as much as 30%. Uh, Joseph, are you ready to rock the stage and wow us with your wisdom? Yes, I am, Roger. Then take it away. She's all yours. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Well, everyone, my topic today is hack your focus, make your day a winning day. As entrepreneurs, as leaders, it's so important to really expand and enhance our ability to focus, focus on results, focus on making progress each and every day. We're in COVID, COVID times, past year, and it's, I think we're just over a year now in, in terms of where the world is, at least where I am in the world, New York being shut down. And if you've each had the opportunity to make progress over the past year and that's your progress then you've won the game right so we're going to talk about the nature of focus the opportunity of creating frameworks nature of games gamification i'm going to cover quite a bit this evening and well every 10 minutes or so we'll do a q a session so i can go deeper into some of these topics and support you my intention here is to serve 
So a little bit more about my background. And at any point, if you're not able to see my screen, please let me know just so I could, just so I could uh, course correct as well also. So this is all about pivoting, course correcting. My name is Joseph Vargas. I'm a dad, I'm a husband, I'm a leadership consultant. My clients call me the breakthrough engineer. I am an engineer. I have a background in chemical engineering. I have a background in computer engineering. That's where I used to be. And over the recent years, the title breakthrough engineer has stood out amongst one of my clients and that became my label. I'm a neurostrategist. I'm a peak performance coach. I'm a game changer. And I believe all of us on this call were game changers if you're willing to accept that. 15 years ago, we launched a community called Success Circles, successcircles.com. We'll talk about that um, in, uh, very shortly too. I also co-lead, earlier we talked about meetups. I co-lead the largest peak performance meetup community in New York City called the New York Power Team. And uh, it's, I, out of all of this, for everything I do, I, I will say I facilitate greatness, very much like Roger's doing in this call too, facilitating greatness. You're all great, extraordinary people. And it's about really keeping the dialogue going between each of us. We're all magnifying and re realizing our goals together. So the question, so you're all here in this conversation. What's your why? What's your why to, for being here? What's your why in life? Simon Sinek talks about this. Tony Robbins talks about this. The bigger the why, the easier the how. And I, I live my life by this, this question each day. I wake up in the morning each day, ask myself, what's my why today? And the why for the most part is consistent. It's consistent, it's short, it, 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 it's there, it's 30 seconds. It pulls at your heartstrings. We'll talk about the heartstrings too. So these are my heartstrings here. This is my son, my wife, my daughter. My son is two years old now, so he looks a little different than this picture. <laughs> and, but this is very much my why. I have this in front of me at all points, whether it's this picture or other pictures of my family, just to remind myself how important and how family, for me, family is everything. For you, your why might be something different. It could be your business. It could be making a difference in the world. It could be being in vibrant health. So I, I'll ask you, what is your why in life? Also, what is your intention here? Intention is like your theme, right? For this moment, what is your intention here? And I believe that when we talk about the power of focus, when we can clarify our intention for what we're doing, for why we're in this conversation, your intention for perhaps um, getting into a new business in the moment. So my intention here is to serve, it's add value. It's really be fully present to your needs. And of course, this PowerPoint presentation is probably a bit of an overlay, a bit of a structure that'll help progress things. And at various points, we'll pause things. So we'll go to questions. My intention here is to serve. So I wanna pose a question. So, so the amateur, and I've been an amateur for much of my life, will often say, I already know that. And the master, you're the, each of you is a master here, will answer that question. Thank you for the reminder. There's always an opportunity being coachable. Many of the things I'll talk about here, you've heard before. So I wanna invite you to hear these things with open ears as if you're hearing them for the first time. Take notes. As Roger had mentioned before, when you take notes, when you put ideas down, maybe mind map, at some point I do, I do a lot of mind mapping, the, the, um, you have an opportunity to learn. And then eventually, I wanna invite you to take this knowledge, something that inspired you and teach someone else, perhaps teach your kids, teach someone tomorrow on your team, because as you teach these things, they internalize even further. So a little bit more of my history. So this is my parents. My parents came from South India. They landed in Canada, in Toronto, Canada, Scarborough, Canada in the late sixties. My mom on the left, she's a nurse. So in India, going to nursing school was a very affordable thing and she was the pathway for my dad to come to this country where my sister was born in Canada, in Toronto. And then a few years later, I was born in New York. And so my mom is still alive. I'll talk about her short, shortly. My mom had a heart transplant 25 years ago. The longest ex living transplant survivor is about 27, 28 years. So my mom's approaching that. We're grateful to have my mom in my life. Um, my parents are part of the reason why I do what I do. So we talked a little earlier about some challenges we experienced in life. And one of the challenges that I experienced in life was my senior year of college, my mom had a heart transplant. And as she was getting her transplant, her doctor 
at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City, where my wife currently works as a physician, he diagnosed with the same condition she had called cardiomyopathy. So they, they diagnosed me with an enlarged heart. And this, for me, as I found this out, had me reshift things, bring more awareness into the work I was doing. And particularly, the question pops up, and this question's popped up quite a bit over the years of my life. You might have heard Steve Jobs talk about this too, one of his Stanford addresses. And that is that if you were, if you had a day to live, right? If, if, you, if, you, if you woke up this morning and realized you had a day or a week to live, would you do something different? Would, your, would you still be doing the work you do? So it's a question that I've been, I posed myself several times over the years. I've had a number of life or death situations. Um, that was one of them, the experience of my mom having a transplant and finding myself having the same condition she had. When I was younger in high school, I would have fainting spells throughout high school. I had no idea what caused it. And the clarity came when my mom had a transplant, when they recognized I had the same condition she had. So life has many paths, right? There's so many paths, there's so many distractions, there's so much noise out there in the world. And it's important that we choose the right path, right? And no path is the right path, but it helps when you're able to have mentors, leaders, help you guide your guide, guide your way, perhaps even being part of this now EBN, being able to connect with other great extraordinary minds. Proximity is power. So I've made numerous pivots over the years. Career-wise, nine plus career changes over the past 20 some years I've made. And eventually you'll get, you'll get to a point where you'll wake up feeling enlivened, fulfilled, engaged in life, and that's where I am now. I invite each of you to really ask yourself this question. So am I enlivened? Am I engaged? Do I feel, feel, do I feel fulfilled doing what I do now? And, if, you're, and if, it's, if, if the answer is no, there's always the opportunity to pivot. And especially during these unique times with COVID, as over here on the East Coast, at least 60% of small businesses, businesses, storefronts have closed and people have had the necessity of pivoting kind of shifting careers, shifting direction. So we'll talk about that in this, this, um, on, on this, on this, um, this session this evening. Realize that the same old thinking will provide you the same old results. So it's time to tap into some new thinking. Take notes, I'm gonna, my intention here is to shed some light. And of course, we'll go into um, some Q&A to go in deeper with this. So this is where I used to be, kind of stuck. I went through a, a phase of my life when I especially found out that I had a heart condition, when I got into the corporate world, realized that the work I was doing as a, eventually I was a technology consultant. My last corporate job was in 2001, managing internet security, stopping hackers in the world, realizing that I wasn't fulfilled doing what I was doing and something needed to shift. And there's this realization, I'm sure you've seen this before at times, this, this chart, the idea of success. So success, for some people, they think of the straight line. You go from point A to point B <laughs> and you get there very quickly. That's not the reality at all, right? The reality is what's on the right. Success is, is a series of thousands and thousands and thousands of course corrections. So I'm a man of at least 10,000 plus course corrections, if not more. And I wanna invite each of us to see that who you are as leaders, male, female, they're, you're constantly pivoting in life. And so critical that we learn how to master the pivot. And as, as entrepreneurs, the two most important skills you can develop. Number one is your ability to pivot, especially when, when the needs are there for you to pivot, career-wise, choices, relationships. The second most important skill to develop is your ability to focus. Focus on being in the zone, focus on flow, focusing, focusing on momentum. One of my mentors, one of my coaches, Michael Gerber, wrote the book called The E-Myth. Almost every book he, he writes, he, he points at the most important skill that an entrepreneur can develop is your ability to concentrate, especially in this time and age where there's so much noise out there in the world. Okay, so as we're all here, I want to invite you to just take a breath, just let go. <laughs> Joseph, but can you take a couple of big, hairy yeah. questions? Of course, of course. Yeah, let's, let's, All go, right. let's, go, let's go to questions. Chloe's had a rough day. His ex-wife cost him an expensive house. 
He's trying to forgive and forget and move on. And his big hairy question is, how can I move forward and really let go? It's so great. And, and the name is Chloe, is that correct? C-H-L-O-E. Chloe, okay, Chloe. Got it. So thank you for sharing, Chloe. And what I first invite you to see is there's an opportunity to take stock, take stock of what's around you. And a key thing here is to get into, into gratitude. However distressing life may seem, as far as your finances, the state of the world, situation with relationship, your, your ex, your, your, your ex-wife, um, there is an opportunity to take stock and be in gratitude for the moment. As we do that, it allows us to get more resourceful to take next steps. I'll talk about that in this session today. Also, the, the importance of focusing. And sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes there are traumatic experiences, challenges, divorces, deaths, things that, that people experience and people around us, you know, in the course of the past 12 months, at least here in the United States, where, where I'm in, half a million people passed on. So how do we get resourceful? We get resourceful by, I find getting a dialogue that helps quite a bit. So we'll talk about getting dialogue very soon, perhaps having a circle of friends, people you can count on, which remind you how awesome, how extraordinary you are. As you get into gratefulness, as you get into dialogue with others who can support you around this, things start shifting. And of course, lots of resources and tools. And we'll talk, we can talk about getting into our bodies, getting into movement. I'll talk about that here as well. One of the most important things you can do, can do for all of us here on this call is managing energy. We talk about managing time. Managing energy is much more of a, a game changer than managing time, especially because energy is a matter of being resourceful. When you're grateful, it's shifting energy. When you stand up, it's shifting energy. When you're stepping outside, it's shifting energy. All right? So it's, it's, it's a matter of being willing to shift your energy and, and focusing on what's next. So I hope that answers part of your question. Of course, we'll even go deeper into this evening too. And I really appreciate your, your question, Chloe. I know many of us are dealing with challenges and that's certainly a huge, extraordinary challenge you're dealing with, with regard to uh, uh, the, the situation in which you're with your ex-wife. Thank you. Second question is uh, from uh, Stefan. How long do you wait until you pivot if you're unsure if the path you're contemplating is not the right one? Well, it helps to have a board, advisory board around you. So people who can provide you feedback, particularly people who are ahead of you. If you're looking to st step into, let's say, a, d a, 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 bit, a bigger leap into entrepreneurship, for example, Having people who know you, perhaps who know the playing field out there, to be able to give you advice and feedback, um, particularly around the market, search, search, search for market market cases. And of course, it's all case by case, but having the right advisory board, community, people will, will, will support you. It also helps to, to, to do a little research <laughs> in advance. It also helps to perhaps step away from the distractions of the normal world. I wanna invite each of you to see that we all live in our own world. Right? And what that means is that we're all dealing with certain circumstances. And when we step away from the distractions and noise that's around us, perhaps even get into nature. Many of you live in Vancouver. Um, there's an opportunity to get more into nature. Of course, some of you live in San Diego and all around the world. But as you step away and engage with other brilliant minds who understand the playing field, there is an, a certain ease toward really mastering the pivot. And that's what's happened for me. I've had several pivots over my, over my life. And part of the key for that is that willingness to step away. And sometimes when we step away and disconnect, what happens is our minds start expanding. As we step into greater levels of relaxation, opportunities, ideas come our way, clarity comes our way. And when you have the right people around you, it's so much easier to pivot. And of course, you know, as you pivot, embrace the pivot, it's so important to take stock and to do the math and look at numbers to really ensure that you're going in the right direction because you might be going down a certain path where there are many deja vu days. And we'll talk about deja vu and how to avoid deja vu very shortly too as well. No further questions, back to you. Beautiful, thank you. Great questions, thank you all. So please keep your questions in the chat. We'll get to your questions uh, further in about 10 minutes or so. And we'll go to the next section here. So anything is possible if you're willing to just really be open to change and you're willing to receive feedback. 
And the key thing here is focusing, really mastering how you focus. We live in an age, there's a law that they're called Moore's Law. And the idea of Moore, Moore's Law, Moore is one of the founders of a company called Intel. And he basically, the theory is that the speed of a transistor, transistor doubles each year. And hence, the reason why technology has expanded and, and blown to the point where we have augmented reality and virtual reality and the future, I have no idea like where the future will, will, will bring us forward in terms of all this technology. One thing I will say is that our capacity to focus has, has, has shifted, has changed, has been more challenging because of all the noise out there. The noise also applies to social media, to invitations, to opportunities that come your way. And it's so important for each of you on this call, each of you listening on the replay to really master the art of focusing. We actually have a, a channel, a, a podcast on Facebook, you can find it called Hack Your Focus. And it's, it's a passion of mine, really empowering entrepreneurs, all of us really master our ability to stay focused. And you probably heard the idea too, that when you have eight things you're focusing on at the same time or three things you're focusing on at the same time, the things, it, it takes, it takes the amount of time it takes to complete any one of those things compounds versus if you just stayed immersed into the one thing you're focusing on and you mastered it and you brought it to completion. So you, you probably also heard the dangers of multitasking. So stay away from multitasking, unless of course, there's an opportunity for you to perhaps listen to comedy while you're doing a power walk or something of that sort, or you're using net time. So I mentioned before about a dialogue. So it's so, when we get in dialogue, when we get in conversation with someone else, especially where that person might be a step or two ahead of us, opportunities come our way. We get out of monologue. And for most people, the stress in life comes from being in monologue. And all, when I say monologue, all that means is, is overthinking things. One thing we've learned in Success Circles, Success Circles is a community that we started 15 years ago. It's a peer coaching accountability community started in 2005. And what we learned that is that most entrepreneurs, what's in the way of them taking action is this thing called procrastination. So what is procrastination? Well, I have a PhD in procrastination. So it's, it's the overthinking of things. It's that question in our minds, am I ready yet? I'm not ready yet, maybe I'll do it later on. And as we think and overthink, for most of us as humans, we have 60 to 80,000 thoughts in our head. Many of us thoughts are repetitive thoughts. So it's important that we quell those thoughts. And one way to do that, and we'll talk about that very shortly, is meditation. Another way of doing this, journaling. If you're able to now get in dialogue with someone who's a step or two ahead of you, really sees you for your best self, who's willing to give you little bits of feedback not enormous amount of feedback, just little bits of feedback. So on this session this evening, my intention is not to overwhelm you, but just to provide you with a few ideas that will help you shift things for yourself. Something extraordinary happens. We're able to make the small micro uh, decisions that'll allow us to make at least 1% progress today, maybe 1% progress tomorrow as well. Then over the course of weeks, months, you start seeing your goals, your dreams start compounding just because you're willing to make 1% progress, moving, moving just a little bit in, in the direction of making progress each day. So it is possible, <laughs> it is possible. You might see a mountain and the mountain might seem like Everest or something very difficult and challenging, but it is possible if you're willing to really commit to it. So some years ago, I was very blessed. So in 2005, I had the opportunity of working with the top coach in an organization run by Tony Robbins. His name is Michael Nitti. And Michael was the coach of all coaches. And I had the opportunity of working with him for some time now, but back then. And it became clear in those coaching conversations that we had, we would speak every two weeks. I would be repeating these there are aspects of my life, my life, I wasn't seeing as much improvement progress around. And I did experience a lot of deja vu days. So Michael invited me to go deeper into understanding what my why was, what my, my values were. And eventually we built a whole framework, thanks to his coaching, kind of taking some of the top concepts from peak performance from David Allen, from Stephen Covey, 
from um, a, a book called The Powerful Engagement, which you're talking about, about managing energy from Tony Robbins, Rapid Planning System. And that framework, the ability to get in dialogue on a daily basis, helped me personally get through some difficult times. We built a whole community around it, helping hundreds of others over the years get through difficult times themselves too, especially through COVID and career shifts and pivots by being in dialogue. So we'll talk about that very sh shortly as well also. But I do invite you, having a coach is a great thing, especially someone who's a reputable coach who has made it. It, it makes a huge difference. So I've had quite a few coaches <laughs> over the years. Some of these people you can recognize, Michael Gerber's on the, on the bottom. Um, I had the opportunity of working with him, bring him to New York as well. Also, Jay Abraham is one of the top uh, godfather marketing. So this is not for me to brag. What I want to say is that I've made a huge investment in my life over the years, somewhere upwards of about a quarter million dollars to really learn from the best, to be in proximity to them, to be able to ask them questions. And we live in a world now that's virtual. So you don't have to travel around the world to go to events. You can do things remotely, virtually. And at the same time, it helps sometimes to really be an experience, to be in a container where you're able to do things. So for example, John Benson, for example, he and I went scuba diving, for example. Sometimes being in a shared experience with someone, with a mentor, it, it helps us because we're away from our home, away from our distractions, and we're able to learn from these people. So I've been fortunate because many of these people I spent time with over the years, and it was an investment of time and energy and money, and it was worth it. And eventually you'll get to a point where you take those distinctions, you're able to teach others now. Earlier, I mentioned that I lead a community called the New York Power Team, but the largest peak performance meetup community in New York. I also launched the New Jersey Power Team. We also helped launch the Connecticut Power Team, the Long Island Power Team. And it's a the peak performance community of people who tend to meet in person, but through COVID, we've been meeting virtually in this virtual world that we live in now. So whatever I teach you here, whatever I show you, if you see value in this, find some way, promise me this, that you'll be willing to teach someone else in your network. Perhaps engage in further conversation this evening. And if, you're, if you agree to this, put yes in the chat that you're willing to teach someone else any distinction, something you learned this evening. Let's put a yes in the chat just so I, there's some agreement here. And my intention here is to serve so we're all learning and growing at the same time. Joseph, um, I better ask you these questions before the chat disappears. Yeah, please. Oh, let's go. I'll have to scroll away up. There's a couple of questions about multitasking. Yes. And, and I, my own question is, please define what you mean by a deja vu day. Yeah, so a deja vu day is a day that repeats. So it's almost like Groundhog Day, where you wake up, it's the same, a very similar experience. And at the end of the day, or at the end of the week, you ask yourself, well, what happened? And very few things have progressed. Very few things have progressed. And it became very clear that you're running around in circles, you're overthinking things, as most entrepreneurs, most people, most people do. Before people came into success circles in the community I lead, this was their experience of life. And eventually what might happen is that a month goes by, some cases six months goes by, some cases years go by. And I've seen people, I've seen people I went to school with. I went to see people that I've met at parity meetings who who are not willing to teach these things they learned, who, are, who, who just step aside, get comfortable. Maybe they're watching Netflix. <laughs> you know, and I, my wife and I, we, 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 our favorite show, we watch once a week. You know, they may watch a lot of TV perhaps, and because they get so absorbed into television where they, you blink your eyes and a decade goes by. So my intention here for all of you is that doesn't, that's not you, that you're willing to get a little, little uncomfortable. You're willing to get in proximity of some great people such that you see that each day is an opportunity to grow, to expand, to create progress. Because progress equates to happiness. When you're able to see measurable progress each and every day, you will, you will slowly and certainly find and embrace a level of fulfillment and happiness that most people can't experience. So that's what, that's what I would call deja vu day. So let's get out of deja vu. Next question, please, Roger. And just uh, comment on what you mean by multi multitasking. Yeah, so multitasking is, doing multiple things at the same time. Maybe you have multiple projects in front of you. And over the course of an hour, your, your aim is to maybe progress on five projects at the same time versus actually just sitting down and doing the work. For example, this is a presentation for me to sit down for 45 minutes or an hour, a few hours to design this all out, to map this all out versus imagine if I were doing this presentation 
here and then they're working on another one for a different topic and then perhaps um <laughs> you know um maybe maybe listening to some other growth audio perhaps the nature of all that together at the same time doesn't progress things the key thing is to really stay focused on what's there in hand so multitasking is basically your attempt to manage multiple projects multiple different projects at the same time that doesn't work if you're running errands let's say you're going outside and you're going shopping of course you can go from one store to the next store to the next store that makes sense because you're managing energy and everything kind of is in that container of being out outdoors and shopping if you're working on your business let's say and you have got three other businesses and they're all a bit unrelated if you multitask in a short period of time between each of those it's unlikely that any of those three or four businesses or projects will move forward versus embracing a pomodoro the idea of a pomodoro is you're spending 40 minutes 30 minutes on a task you're in flight mode the devices distractions are off and you're staying focused until completion and that's how you defeat multitasking the next question in this round and the last is uh, how do you find the right coach when you've got no money? Great, great question. <laughs> great question. So I would recommend getting into a conversation where you're able to perhaps engage a mentor. So different organizations out there, so one's called SCORE, for example. You can access a mentor if you want to be an entrepreneur. People who are perhaps a little older, they've, they've, they've been successful on that path of being an entrepreneur and they want to give back. So we live in a world where people want to give back. People want to contribute continuously. There's so many resources that are there. Even the nature meetup groups are all virtual now. Being here on, on the Entrepreneurial Business Network, being able to connect with other minds here, there's an opportunity to mastermind, to build accountability connections here. So what I'd offer you is that it's not difficult. I've had great mentors over the years. Um, some of them I paid a lot of money to, and some of them we had a co-relationship. My friend Mark Hardy, Years ago, he was going through a health challenge and I coached him around something I knew well enough, the nature of, 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 of health, something very passionate about. It. I had to become passionate about because of my own, my own challenges with heart disease. So I was able to help him. And in the process of this, this is going back 13, 14 years ago, he coached me on PR, on building my business, initial stages. If there's something you can offer someone else, it's, it's amazing what can happen in that co-relationship and it doesn't have to cost much. It can be free, especially if you're willing to be honest, authentic, and direct with what you need. And if you're willing, if you're committed to staying focused, any mentor you work with, any guide you work with, if they see you're succeeding, if they see you're willing to take those actions each and every day, then they'll be glad to continue mentoring you as well. Great no question. Further, no further questions. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Roger, for those questions. And please keep bringing those questions forward in the chat. Any questions, we'll have the opportunity later on and I'm being mindful of time too as well also. So I invite you to see what is your ideal day? What does your ideal day look like? Well, this is kind of the power of visioning. So my, my day starts the day before. So for example, today's, today is Tuesday. So before this day started, I envisioned my day unfolding, succeeding, waking up, seeing, noticing what time I woke up, noticing what, 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 what I would do when I got off my bed. For me, that's getting on my knees and praying, for example. It's one thing I do each morning. So I invite you to see what does your ideal day look like? And your ideal day might be in paradise, perhaps, you know, being around palm trees, perhaps. But you also have to get you know, grounded with reality of where reality is right now. So I ask you to kind of envision that so for the next like 20 seconds, maybe jot something down. You can work on this later on. There's power in visioning. This power envisioning is like the basketball player, player Michael Jordan, perhaps considered arguably the greatest basketball player of all time. He spent quite a bit of time visioning his success, his ball going into the basket over and over and over again. Just spend a few seconds just taking some notes down what your ideal day looks like. Now, secondly to this, if I gave you a genie's lamp, right? And Let's say we were able to transport you to, a, to a, an ultimate world or to a, an island, a paradise. What would your ideal day look like there? Hence, what's the vision for your future? Where do you want to be? Well, and we'll go deeper into that too, soon as well also. 
it's a bit of a me. So in the background here, you see a picture of Bali <laughs> in the background. So this is a bit about my office, what it looks like. It's one of my offices. I have two offices, my home office, and I have another office away from home. And there's power in designing your environment in a certain way where you're inspired. We talk about visioning. So I have a picture of Bali. I've actually, I've actually um, traveled where I've had the ability of staying in a hut on the beach in the past. So I, I mentioned before about my family and I'll, let me, let's go a little deeper into why I do what I do. So my parents came from, from India to Canada some 50 plus years ago and they eventually settled in New York. And I live the compound effect. How I live the compound effect is because I got the experience that growing up. So this is a segment of my family and my family normally get together every month and we get together on holiday celebrations too as well. So my mom, who is over here in this picture, she is the reason, she's a matriarch of our family, and she's a reason why everyone else is here. She became a nurse, she was an ICU nurse, and as a nurse, she had the funds to send money back home. And our household in Queens, New York, every year for many years, we would essentially, she, would, she and my dad would adopt a different sibling to come to our house. Within six months, they'd see the sibling off where they would encourage that sibling to move out, perhaps move into an apartment, get married, buy their own home. And to this day, we probably have upwards of 1,500 people or more in this country. And this is just a small segment of our family. So you can imagine husbands and wives and their families and their families and expands. And this is the nature of the compound effect. And this is why I do what I do. At a young age, I got the experience my life compounded, blessed by having numerous uncles, aunts, people around me loving on me. And I realized we don't, not all of us have this as an opportunity. Some of us have smaller units we grew up in. And I wanna invite you to see that if you choose to, you can, you can tap into a family structure around you, including for example, what Roger's doing with EBN here, being able to tap into a greater pool of people, resources, minds that are out there because when we, I, I believe that it is possible for all of us to win together. And I live by that, you win, we win. I grew up with that tagline. My, my parents taught me that at a young age that we can all win together. And these days I do this with the communities I lead, success circles, the power team. I, I do miss meeting people in person. <laughs> and I, I trust that as the vaccine comes out and so forth, um, things will shift, especially as we gain herd immunity. So I have the opportunity of engaging communities and people quite a bit. I mentioned my journey before, it was a bumpy one. I, I, I quit, I almost quit several times. And you know, if, if you're struggling out there with COVID, what you're dealing with in the world, I know how you feel. I've been through it and anything is possible, especially if you're able to tap into the right minds. My business also was in struggle over the years. I've mentioned before that I've had a, at least nine different career changes over the years. It wasn't until I got in proximity with the right people where I was able to start shipping things, especially the right mentors, reading the right books, um, where I was able to kind of start shipping things. And these are some of the communities I've spoken from in the past. So let's talk about some, some clear strategies, things you can take on to really shift, shift things, to really embrace um, progress. Simple things, so waking up inspired. So I talk about envisioning my day the day before. So when you, when you wake up in the morning, there's resistance and resistance starts building up throughout our, our morning. So Stephen Presswell talks about this in The War of Art. Um, also the author, Julia Cameron talks about this as well also, resistance builds up. It's up to us to, to beat resistance. So one thing we can do earlier in our day, as we get up in the morning, as we prime our minds, as we meditate, perhaps as we get in dialogue with people, I'll talk about an opportunity with that very soon, is that if you're able to start winning your morning, basically doing the most difficult things, the challenging things early in your day, what happens is the confidence cycle, you start building successes and wins and these, these success start, start stacking up. So as your day unfolds, as you get to noontime, let's say, since you've won your morning, since you've basically progressed on a couple of key tasks or maybe one key task in the morning, it gives you the confidence now to keep, keep doing more of that. 
So I want to invite each of you in this call to let's defeat resistance together. So how do you shift your focus? Easy thing to do is start journaling. Some years ago, I went into a depression tailspin after 9-11. Why, what, why, that, why, why was it happening? I was watching a lot of TV. <laughs> I was watching about 13 hours of TV per day. And what started, what started to happen is that I went into a bit of downward spiral. My, my physician, my, my general practitioner physician prescribed me Prozac to deal with this. Fortunately, I didn't take that path. I didn't take the Prozac. I put in a CD set called Personal Power 2 and I started journaling, I started journaling power questions. My journaling, my wins, my journaling, my magic moments. I went, but by journaling, where I was raising my standards, things started shifting for myself. So I invite you to start, start journaling, start envisioning your next day in advance. As you close out your day today, for example, write down some key wins, key experiences today that you're proud of. Because as you go to bed, what happens is you start, your dreams start working for you. You start, your dreams start fueling your, your vision, your big why. So this is an easy thing for each of us has can access to the ability to journal. It just takes a piece of paper, a notebook, have your own personal notebook, do it in paper. It's a kinesthetic way of, of engaging your, your mind at the end of the day. Very simple. Map out your day in advance. Score a huge win early in the morning as a means to defeat resistance. So where are you putting the first three hours of your day or five hours of your day? We believe when you win your morning, you win your day. Celebrate every step, acknowledge successes. So I'll, I'll pr provide you an offer later on on this call to access a group huddle we do each day. We've been doing this since the start of COVID last, last uh, April. And uh, we'll talk about it very shortly. It's free, it's accessible. We do it in Clubhouse. We also do it on Zoom as well also. Celebrate small and big wins. Get a buddy. So we talked about before that a buddy could be someone in your network. It could be someone as part of the um, entrepreneur business network. It could be someone in successor because we actually have a service where we connect with someone who's a step or two ahead of you. There is power in getting feedback on a daily basis, getting in dialogue with someone who's a step or two ahead of you. It supercharges your brain being able to connect with someone who, who can support you, who can give you feedback. And sometimes when, we, when we're alone, when we're isolated, if let's say you're a solopreneur, it's easy to overthink things and the overthinking of things causes stress. If you're dealing with anything, someone even, one even before mentioned that um, you were dealing with a challenge around a relationship, around a divorce, and just get in communication, get in dialogue. Addressing breakdowns, we all deal with breakdowns. So how do you deal with breakdowns? So with every breakdown, every challenge you experience, recognize there's an opportunity. If you're, if you're able to rewire your, your brain or hack your focus, the name of this topic here, you start noticing that there is an opportunity. There's a silver lining, right? And it's a matter of just recognizing what is that. And sometimes getting in dialogue with someone helps you clarify what that opportunity is. So the next time you have a breakdown, a pitfall, within minutes, perhaps in moments, you'll clarify, well, there's an opportunity around this. There's a win around this. For me, I've had a few. So my dad had a stroke years ago. And the year he had a stroke, his second stroke in 2004, I went to nutrition school because I made a commitment to my family that I would not allow anyone else in my family to have heart disease or die from heart disease the way my dad did or my mom did prior to that with her heart transplant. There's always an opportunity, maybe a way of learning something, especially with the internet and all the YouTube videos and choices. There's so many ways of learning and expanding our minds. So re-upping energy. So energy is everything. There's a book called The Power of Full Engagement. Tony Schwartz, Jim Lohr came out years ago. And the idea of this book, the topic here is when you shift energy, it's much more impactful than managing time. How do you shift your energy? Basically, you shift your environment. You get up and move. You step outside, perhaps. <laughs> you minimize distractions. You get hydrated. Anything you can do to really embrace that life is energy. And I want to invite you, you know, I don't have this mentioned here, but I want to invite you to see that we are all athletes in this playing field of life. When you see yourself being an athlete, and I don't mean necessarily mean an athlete in the sense of being playing a sport all the time or being in phys great physical shape. And I do recommend that if possible. What I'm saying is it's being an athlete in the game of life. Life is a game. When you can make today's game of life better than yesterday's game of life, over all of a sudden, that 1% shift each day, as you tap into that, you start tapping into what's called compound growth. 
And I talked about compound growth earlier with my family. I believe compound growth is accessible in any area of life. And the game of having it all is possible if you're willing to make each day better than the last. It takes measuring, it takes getting in conversation, it takes grounding yourself, it takes focusing on gratitude, it takes a lot of these things. And if you can take maybe one or two things out of today's session, perhaps gratitude might be that, perhaps getting in dialogue could be that, perhaps journaling could be that, could perhaps drinking water, fluid could be that too as well. Just take a couple of things out of this session here and apply those things and see what happens. It is all about shifting energy and we're all athletes in this game of life. Every day is a game, every week is a game, every month is a game. We play games all the time, games, games are fun. You're open for a couple of questions? Jim? Yes, please, let's just so do April it. April asks, how do you get around the perceived pressure of racing the clock and the illusion of competition? Yeah, it's just that, it's realizing that there's an illusion and as we step out of our environment, perhaps get in nature or be around other people perhaps who, who, who are uh, more dynamically engaged into life, then that starts shifting. Perhaps going to a spiritual community, perhaps getting, I mentioned before, in nature, recognizing that it's all an illusion. Everything in the world is made up, completely made up. Recognizing also that we all, each of us have our own worlds. And I don't mean that in a woo-woo sense of the world, we have our own worlds. I just mean that we all have our own perceptions of life, of, of, um, of, of time. And as we step away from our environment, as this quote says, the greatest influence in your life, stronger than your willpower is your environment. Change that if necessary until you can, are mentally strong, you can never be what you want to be without a good environment. Yogananda has a quote called uh, environment stronger than willpower. Bucky Fuller often quotes that too as well. So the easiest thing is basically shift your environment. If your environment could be your physical environment, it also could be your peer group too as well also. And interesting things happen. So, I mean, we live in, New I live in New York. So New York, where I live, it's an urban jungle. And sometimes I find that when I step out of this urban jungle and go somewhere different, perhaps even go to Vancouver, for example. When I went to Vancouver years ago, I did a uh, silent meditation in, in the forest, <laughs> Vancouver, in the Glacier Valley. And when I came back to work, back to New York, my perception of time shifted. Part of the reason for that is that all those internal dialogue the 60, 70, 80,000 thoughts we have in our head, as we get in nature, as we disconnect from things, we're able to kind of tune out a lot of that excess noise. So basic thing you can do is basically get in nature or shift your peer group, get in proximity of people performing at a higher level or different level, or be around people who can really encourage you. There's a great app called, um, a New York, another New Yorker founded called Focusmate. And let's say you are stuck in this virtual world where you can't step away, where you, you're expected to perform, you could always use Focusmate or something similar to have a co-working session with someone else, perhaps, for the duration of an hour. And just being a proximity to that person virtually, you might see you level performance shift if you are looking for a performance shift. That's just one idea. But the simplest thing to do, of course, is to just shift your environment and get in nature. Great, great, great question, April. Thank you. Jai asks, I've been doing this deja vu day thing for a while now. How do I get off this roller coaster? Yeah, so the way to get off the roller coaster, I actually have a slide in here on the roller coasters too as well. <laughs> and I think I, I took it out. Um, so first of all, limiting the language roller coaster, just take it out of vocabulary. The, the, the moment we see that life is a roller coaster, there is this expectation that we're going to go on the roller coaster again and again and again. So basically limiting a language is the first step. The, the second thing we can do to break out of that is to get in dialogue. That's what I'd say. You know, in our community success circles, it's a peer coaching community. We've had thousands of probably upwards of seven, 8,000 pairings at this point of people. And every two weeks we connect people with a different momentum buddy, we call it. And so sometimes getting engaged with someone and getting in conversation with someone who's a step or two ahead of you wakes us up to what's possible. We're able to model their successes, model their strategies. They can model all our strategies too as well. So the clearest thing that I've found over the years amidst everything I've done, including journaling, including meditating, including being in a, in a, in a meditating in a forest <laughs> in Vancouver is just the willingness to, to continually shift my peer group and get in dialogue with people who are a step or two ahead of me. 
But as we do that, our perceptions and our, the way we our, see the world shifts too as well. And we stop living these deja vu days. Second thing you can do is take inventory, do the math. So I measure everything. So part of being an engineer is the ability to measure things. So there's a quote out there, it's Pearson's law. And it says that that which is measured daily grows. Well, th that which is measured grows and that which is measured daily grows exponentially. That's kind of the summation of it. So if you're willing to each day invest 15 minutes, start your day, end your day, measuring your day, journaling the good stuff, journaling the challenges, and also measuring basic things. Did I drink enough water? Did I talk to a loved one today? Did I, how much revenue did I make today? How many conversations did I have aligned with sales that I have today? When you're able to measure these things, whatever you choose to measure, where focus goes, energy flows, eventually it's easy to shift out of deja vu days because our focus now is on making progress. And progress is basically the, the way Embracing progress is a way of defeating deja vu. Great question. Thank Jerry you. has added to his question, how and where does he find that group of uplifting supportive peers? So great question. So we have it for you. So if you're an entrepreneur who's growth minded, we have success circles. We started this 15 years ago in 2005. And I'm grateful for my coach, Michael Nitty, who I had the opportunity of, of interviewing a few weeks ago for encouraging me to build it. So Success Circles is a global community. We have members in Canada, around the United States. One of our top members, Arvin, he lives in Vancouver, for example. Um, so it's accessible, we live in a virtual world. So this is something that's accessible, it's very low investment too. It's a couple of tea per day, perhaps. You'll, you'll, you'll see that very soon. So that's one thing I'd, I'd recommend. Um, if, if, if you're looking, if you're dealing with something else, another crisis, let's say, there are, other support groups, other support networks that are accessible. So it's a matter of seeing, recognizing what you're dealing with and finding the support group that can support you with that. Or it could be even finding someone in your network to be an accounting partner, to be a buddy of yours. However, realize we found, and we've tested this out over the years is that after about four weeks, people get comfortable. They, they start letting each other off the hook. And that's the power of frameworks. We have a very unique framework on how we do things. And the basis for what we do is having a daily huddle. Every game, every sport is a huddle. And if you can start your day, your, your, your game with a huddle, that streamline, that's 20, 30 minutes where you're both able to share effectively asking each other great questions, like we're doing here, for example, what happens is you're able to pivot early in your day, make the necessary course corrections. We're all course correcting through this game of life to win the game. No further Remember, you, questions. Great, thank you. Great, great, great questions. So you are the average of the five people you spend time with. So spend time with people who challenge you, who inspire you, who, who are perhaps living the life you want to live. In 2012, I wanted to get married and it was important to me. And I was approaching 40 at that stage of my life. And one of my coaches gave me a piece of extraordinary advice. She invited me to start hanging out with couples who are married and to start experiencing and appreciating their dance in marriage. And it so happened that late 2012, I met the woman I would marry. We had a first date. We got engaged within a month and a half. Six months later, we got married. <laughs> and if it weren't for that coach giving me that feedback in 2012, where I learned to appreciate that, I don't think I'd be married. And this goes for anything in my life. And this goes for anyone in our network and success circles. We have, we have hundreds of case studies of people doing just this, whether it's being a relationship, whether it's starting a business, whether it's the uh, mastering the dance, it, it's all a game. And you, if you can be around people who are winning that game already, eventually something will transmute and you will eventually have that skill too as well also, or, or from the language of an engineer, like a bit of osmosis happens. <laughs> something starts shifting from one person to the other person. It's a quote from Lombardi. So there's only one way to succeed in anything that is giving it everything you have. So life is a game, play hard, show up, show up each and every day. And I love sports. I, I'm not a big sports watcher, but I play sports. And I wanna invite you, each of you to see that life is a sport. And if you can also embrace and maximize your energy and be healthy and great, then you know all the better, right? But I wanna invite you to see that we're all athletes in this playing field of life. And quality questions asked consistently will lead to a quality life. So I ask 
I'm, I'm asked quality questions on a daily basis. The basis for success ripples for our community is about asking quality questions. Once again, this is from my, my mentors, people I've paid in the past to coach me, support me on this journey. People who've asked me questions to step out of my own comfort zone over the years. We meet in person in New York. We meet virtually some of our members are from around the world here. Um, I, I won't go into the backgrounds, but we do meet. There's power in masterminding. The idea of a mastermind is you have a community of people who come together at a scheduled time with the intention of really magnifying, helping each other rise up. So as the, as the tides rise, all the boats rise. This is one of our members, Arvind Kamsay. Arvind actually lives in, in Vancouver now, but you know, he talks about how his team grew. He ran, he runs, he, this is his third company he's launched now. He's doing seven figures per year but he was part of our program, the team program with Success Circles and his team grew quite a bit. And part of the reason for our team grew is that we encourage our members to focus on leveraging, focusing on their zone of genius each and every day. And once again, this comes out to questions, asking questions. We would ask Arvin each day on a huddle. So Arvin, where are you leveraging today? Where are you raising your standards? Where are you building team? Asking him that question each and every day, eventually he started doing this. You know, and, and it's just a matter of having people ask you and, and being persistent perhaps with these questions. So once it's, uh, I, I, I do miss, and this is Frank. Frank's uh, the co-leader of the Medic Power team with me. And uh, I do miss being outdoors and doing this, this sort of thing. To maximize on this moment, maximize in every moment. Everything is about the moment, embracing the moment. And uh, it's about being resourceful. This is also one of our other members of Rochelle Listener. She talks about the success circles momentum team is a great way to stay focused on the date, the day actions needed to deliver and goals, the support and feedback allow me to course correct. So I'm constantly moving forward inch by inch. I believe isolation kills success. And with the team, I never feel isolated. Many people have my back. This is the basis for one of our programs called the team program. Once again, my goal is add value here. So I want to encourage each of you to start finding people who are who are smarter than you, who are steps ahead of you. I'm, I'm certainly not the smartest person in the room. Uh, my wife is smarter than I am, <laughs> that's an example. And just in her company, I've grown quite a bit. I'm constantly putting myself in situations where I'm around people who are playing smart, a bigger game. Also, what's your superpower? Superpower is something that you're good at, that's what you can do over and over again. It's basically your zone of genius. And it's something you can do over and over again, perhaps something you get paid for too as well, and that by leveraging the rest, by encouraging others to help you, you can grow, you can expand your vision, you can build that business. It is all possible. What do you want to be? It's possible. Chloe so asks them, how do you deal with the thought that I deserve a better life, but I'm not getting it after working hard and taking a lot of garbage along the way? Yeah, it's an it's interesting question. So how much pain is there for you to shift? And how much pain is there to stay where you are? How much comfort is there now in staying where you are right now? And it takes getting uncomfortable, right? So how do you get uncomfortable? You put yourself in a position where you can get feedback. You might want to look in the mirror one day. So years ago, I had an early pain point. When I, my first job as a process engineer, this is in 1995, I got into a car accident. I was driving to work and I hit the side of a divider. And the car went in, the car went in fire. My head went back, had a bit of whip, whip, whiplash. And I walk out of the car and fortunately um, a truck stopped traffic and the police car, the police cars came and they've reversed, reversed um, the highway. So um, no other traffic can go through. And the police officer drove me back to my dorm room. And as I laid in a fetal position on my bed that day, I asked myself, if I die doing this, would I be happy? And the answer was no. And I had to look myself in the mirror and answer that question for the next few days. And eventually over the course of the next month, I started making shifts and getting into technology. And that was one of the first pivots I had career-wise. So for me, the pain of potentially dying in that moment had me wake up. So I would invite you, you know, asking this question, what's the pain of staying, doing what you're doing for the rest of your life? 
and can you get resourceful enough to be able to, to shift things, right? To find the right mentors, maybe even get a side hustle. Maybe you need to be doing this work now so you can have the revenue to be able to pay the rent and your mortgage, basically Maslow's hierarchy, getting the basic needs covered. And you could possibly turn up a TV or turn up other distractions and use other time. We have 168 hours each week. And I guarantee you, if we traced every hour, you invest seven hours of sleeping, perhaps two hours in the bathroom per day, maybe, maybe, maybe more, maybe, maybe less, maybe six, seven hours of work time, or maybe six hours of work time, meal time, you'll likely have at least about 20, 30 hours remaining in your week. So it's about how you use that time for that side hustle. Then once again, this is about focusing. And when you're around people who are willing to be uncomfortable, you will naturally want to get uncomfortable too as well because you're seeing them being uncomfortable. No further right. questions. Great. And once again, why, why now and why me? Really cutting, cutting the chase. Um, you know, it, it's just about really being around the right people. And Michael Gerber was one, one of those people for me years ago, one of my heroes. He wrote the book, The E-Myth. He saw what I was doing with accountability. So for three years, we were, I was running a business like a hobby. We were called the Embrace Group. And he invited me to see that I had a formula around accountability that was unique, that was affordable, that supported entrepreneurs around the world for as little as a cup of coffee per day. And eventually um, we built success circles. One of our other members, she's now working at Microsoft. She has her dream job, Victoria. Great, and another question to tap into, the power of questions. So if we met three months from now, looking back, what has to have happened during that period for you to feel happy about your progress? So we're approaching the end of Q1 now, currently, whenever you're watching this video. So three months from now, let's see, as the middle of the year is approaching, let's see June is approaching, what has to have happened? So most people, they set goals, intentions, they set, they set um, outcomes at the start of the year. And for most people, but only about 6% by June are on point as far as reaching, re realizing those goals. And my invitation for each of you here is to not be in that, to not be in that 94 percentage, to be in that 6%. And how you do that is you review your goals each day and you get in dialogue around those goals, those outcomes, those dreams we have. For every game deserves a huddle. So with our program in success circles, we, we provide you a daily huddle each day. I'm gonna provide you an opportunity here too to join me on a group huddle. We do a group huddle ever since COVID started last April, we've been doing a group huddle. If you go to momentumhuddle.com, you can access that easily there. It's a daily group huddle. And uh, I, know, I know Roger, you'll put that in the chat too as well. Um, we, we just, we're just we, we help you in our process, we help you notice where you are right now, clarify the results where you want to be. And part of that is celebrating each step of the way. So I mentioned getting off the roller coaster. <laughs> so if there is no roller coaster, eliminate that language and start embracing progress. There's a formula to do this. It takes a framework. We have a framework for it. Um, recognize too the law of diminishing intent. So the longer you delay something, the less probability you have of doing it. This is from Jim Rohn. And hence, you know, if you have an idea, if you're inspired, your brain's inspired, your prefrontal cortex inspired, it's important you take action right away. So even after this event, start setting things in motion. So if you feel inspired to, let's see, like get in the treadmill, perhaps keep your sneakers by your bed. <laughs> it's that simple. Question from Jai, can I join the momentum huddle even if I'm not an entrepreneur? Yes, you can. Of course you can. Yeah, you, you're welcome to join us for five calls. It's our gift for you. Go to MomentumHuddle.com. We do this, each day we do this on Zoom at 12 o'clock or, or nine, 9 Pacific time. And then we move to Clubhouse at 9.15. And we're, we're appreciating Clubhouse and leveraging Clubhouse as well for this reason. And accountability is the great question. Were there any more questions there, no, Roger? No further okay. questions. Okay, great. So accountability is key. Accountability, I mentioned before at the start of this conversation, it's about really sharing your outcomes, sharing what you're up to with people. It's about keeping your goals, your dreams in existence. What does it mean putting things in existence? It's putting things on a calendar. It's getting in conversation, getting in dialogue with people who are two or step or two ahead of you. As you get in dialogue, it creates a thread of accountability now. There's this expectation that you're going to rise up and own that each day. So we have a process for that, a framework for that, where every two weeks you get a new buddy. 
we pair you up with someone. You have a daily call each and every day. It's called a buddy call, momentum buddy call. And um, you know, it comes, comes down to really showing love and being around people who care about you. Motivation only goes so far. When you get in dialogue with someone who's a step or two ahead of you, things start progressing. Daily habits to add up to. I do recommend the book called Atomic Habits. It's a great book by James Clear. He talks about some of his ideas, including shifting your environment. It's a fantastic book. Gamification. So I mentioned this earlier too. So game, life is a game. Every day is a game. So I, I, in our house, we have baseballs, we have soccer balls, we have charts. We have a chart for my daughter on the fridge where as she progresses and reaches, fixes her bed and does her homework, she gets a prize. And why we do this is because of games. We all love games as humans. So with Success Circles, with our community, we built a whole business based on games. So if you're interested in that, check out our team program. Every quarter we play what's called the, the Momentum Team Program. It's basically we play what's called the 90 day year. What if you could accomplish four times as much over the course of 90 days as the average person? So we break the day into quarters or every quarter. So quarters from nine to, from eight to 12, from 12 to four, from four to eight, from, from eight to midnight, <laughs> let's say, if you could design each quarter of your day as let's say a day itself, things start progressing. We start seeing and shifting the way you think, think about things, things start shifting at a monumental level. This is about building, building systems that make it impossible for you to misbehave. Discipline can only go so far. So having a framework that inspires you to succeed, be your best self, it'll help you go there further. And I'm all about, I'm all about designing frameworks. I designed this framework for myself. And over the years, we've invited hundreds of people into our framework as well, testing it out and improving it all along the way. So the team program is something we're starting soon. The next team program begins, it's for Q2 of 2021. So it's 90 day year. If you're interested in this, you can, you can apply for this. Go to successcircles.com forward slash team. You can tap into it. It's a virtual community. We have multiple calls. We have referrals. You also get a buddy every two weeks. Um, we have a, a framework as part of this too. I mentioned where focus goes, energy flows. So as you're perhaps watching the replay of this, you may want to pause this slide. We're always encouraging our members to focus on key things that drive forward results. Where are you being courageous and bold each day? Where do you see opportunities and challenges? Where are you appreciating the magic of life, magic moments? How are you making bold requests? Where are you leveraging? How are you building team? As we do these things, as we focus on these things each and every day, you start getting rewarded back. Where focus and intention go, energy flows. It's that simple. So any more questions now? <laughs> no further questions. Okay. Great. Well, what I want to say, so this is not for everyone. So if you're, if you're someone who believes that success is a sum of small efforts, if you're willing to really embrace the compound effect, making, one, making life 1% better than yesterday over time, you'll get rewarded. We have a great program for this. It's called the Momentum Team. We also have the Momentum Buddy Program. Um, to tap into this program, this community, I want to invite you to apply. And if you go to MomentumSuccessCircles.com forward slash team, you can access the team application form for this is for Q2. If you're just interested in having a buddy, you can just go to successcircles.com and follow the links for a buddy. The cost of a buddy is very minimal. It's about a cup of tea per day. So the investment is $97. If you're on this call and you take action, let's say by tomorrow, you can give you a discount. Well, we'll you can save an extra $9 on top of that. So it'll be $88. That'll be your investment for a buddy. You get to, and you get for that, you get two buddies. So every two weeks you get a buddy. Then after that, you get another buddy for the next two weeks. So for the given month, you get two buddies. We do our best to pair you up with someone who is a step or two ahead of you. Um, and my email is joseph at successcircles.com. And I thank you. I really appreciate this opportunity to connect, to add value. Uh, I appreciate Roger. Roger and, I've had, and I have had a great conversation. I had the opportunity of interviewing Roger recently on a Rules for Success podcast, rulesforsuccess.com. Um, if there are any more questions, please ask away. I'm here to serve. Um, we've been testing this for years, for 15 years. We've learned a lot about human nature, human behavior, and what it takes to create, what it takes to create progress in our lives. Uh, Carlo says, how can we know which groups you, sh you have, how 
can we know which groups you have we should join? Great. So we have a couple of major groups. So one is a buddy program, one is a team program. The team is basically a mastermind where we play the 90 day year. So if you're interested in that, you can apply for it. Not everyone gets in and only about maybe 30% of people might get into that team program. We're very specific. We're actively searching for growth minded entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs already in traction, looking to grow even further. That's the team program. If you just want a buddy, the buddy program will support you in breaking out of isolation. It's also a great community. We have a whole roster. So as you go through the program, you basically choose your favorite buddies. These become your draft picks. And what I'm saying is, is that it's all about, so the buddy program is our core program. We started that in 2005 and we found ways to optimize it. So we're all actively finding ways to be, be better each day. So those Thanks. are our main, main programs. And we also have a free program. If you go to momentumhuddle.com, you can join me each day on a group huddle where you get to set your day in motion, set your intention for the day. Also share your wins from the morning. That's momentumhuddle.com. Joseph, I have to cut you off there. We're a bit over time. Uh, thank you on behalf of EIN 76,000 members uh, for sharing your knowledge uh, gleaned over what 16 years now of how, into, how to make one-on-one uh, -on -one mentorships work and, and the huddles, all wonderful stuff, great resources for entrepreneurs to have. So uh, thank you again. Uh, and uh, we very much appreciate uh, the time and the wisdom you have uh, decided to uh, donate to us. Thank you. My pleasure, Roger. I remember you win, I win. Let's all win together. Life is a game. Let's all play to win. Bring that mindset into everything you do. And as others around you are winning, they'll pull you up to win too as well. Thank you so much. This has been a pleasure.